is an amazing God. Hallelujah. Same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Good morning, church. Happy Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, Happy Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. On a glorious morning like this, over 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus came into the streets of Jerusalem, declaring for the first time to the entire world, I am the King of Kings. I am the Lord of Lords. He rode on a donkey and he came in. And the Bible said as he came in, people took off their garments. They took off, they went and got branches and they laid it down so that he could walk on it. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Jesus walked on it. So I don't have to. Come on, come on, come on. Say it again. Jesus walked on it. So I don't have to. Hallelujah. You know, from that moment when he declared himself King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Pharisees and the Sadducees could no longer rest. They could no longer rest. They were now determined more than ever. Right from the beginning of his ministry, they wanted to kill him. But at this point in time when he rode in as king, come on, he didn't say it, but he took the actions. Somebody say, action speaks louder than words. He took the action. He rode in on a donkey and people said, this is the king. Hallelujah. And his action spoke volume. And guess what? They didn't know. Tell your neighbor, they didn't know. Oh, they never knew. Even concerning you, they don't know. They, thought, they think you are being led to the slaughter. They think you are being led to the end. They think they are about to win and have victory. But they didn't know. They never knew. That what God had planned. He had not revealed it unto them. And they were used to fulfill the scriptures. They were used to take the king of kings to the cross. That he might not have dominion. Not only over the living. But over the entire creation of God. God has set you up for that dominion this morning. Jesus has already paid that price. It is time for you to walk in the fullness of that dominion that Jesus has done. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I got two messages for you this morning. So just stay with me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. King of glory, we bless you. Ancient of days, we give you praise. You are more than worthy. And the whole of the hairs on our head being tongues. It is not enough to praise you, God. But from the depth of our hearts, from these earthen vessels, we lift up our praises unto you, God. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus unto us right now. Glorify the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Because over 2,000 years ago, you rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And you became king of kings known to all the world. And you began the journey even to the cross. Just so that I will not have to go through it. So that none of us will have to go through it. Lord we bless you today O oh God. That which you have done is complete. There is no adding or taking away from it O oh God. Father we receive the fullness of it O oh God. Glorify your name O oh God. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Alright, John 12, chapter 12. I read it when we started service. But you know, I want to read from verse 15 and 16. Just verse 14 and 15 actually. The Bible said, And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon. A translation says, when he had found a young donkey, he sat thereon. As it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Come on, daughter of Zion, hear ye the word of the Lord today. Fear not. Come on, declare to yourself, I fear not. Hallelujah. Be not afraid. Hallelujah. Be not afraid. Bible says, be not afraid. Behold, thy king cometh. Hallelujah. Sitting on an ass cult. Your king is coming. Your king is here. 
listen to me, he may come in a way that is not desirable by man, but listen to me, what it contains cannot be contained. Oh, can I tell you again? What he contains cannot be contained. Hallelujah. That's your king. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. He's the ancient of days. He's the creator of the universe. He's the master of the universe. He's the beginning without a beginning. The ending that never ends. He's the one that the bread of his nose feeds the Red Sea parted. He's the God that sits in heaven and the earth is his footstool. He's the mighty God. He's the awesome king. He's Jehovah the fighter of our battle. He's Jehovah the defender of the universe. He is the great I am that I have. That is your king. Hallelujah. There is no battle that he fights that he doesn't win. Before the battle starts, he's won it. Hallelujah. While men are already planning what they're going to do, he's already won it. Victory is his name. Hallelujah. And that is your king. And the Bible said he came on a donkey's ass. Hallelujah. He came lowly, but let me tell you something, even though he comes lowly, it cannot be disputed that he is king. No matter how a king arrives in a place, he cannot be disputed. If the president of this nation shows up anywhere, however he shows up, he is still the president. Hallelujah. Even if he goes somewhere secretly without noise, guess what? His security is still top notch. Because it is the president that is coming. And that's the king that you saw. When he came in on that donkey's house, guess what? They may not see the ones who were with him, but the host of heaven was standing at attention. Hallelujah. Angels of God were standing with swords drawn. The defender of the universe was being defended at that point in time. Hallelujah. God is good. Even though your king may come lowly, he doesn't dispute the fact that he's your king. I want you to know this morning, Jesus came lowly, but he is king. They didn't know it. Guess what? When God shows up in your life, they're not going to like it. I tell you this. If men like it when Jesus shows up in your life, hello, think twice. Is that Jesus that showed up? When men like it, when God manifests in your life, think twice. Is that God that manifested? But when men complain, when they ridicule, when they say, oh, he cannot amount to anything. Hello, guess what? That is God in action. Because his plans they cannot comprehend. His moves they do not know. How he's going to do it, they have no idea. When he led the children of Israel out of Egypt and he led them through uh, towards the Red Sea, they thought it was over. There was no way for escape. Pharaoh's army was coming from behind. The Red Sea was ahead. And they thought, well, we got them. Let me tell somebody this morning. You might have been backed into a corner. Guess what? That corner is about to open up a door for you. In the name of Jesus. No one can back God up in the corner. He's the creator of the corners. I, 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 I love to say this. Who are that whole mountain before Zerubbabel? You will be made, whole, you will be made low. Listen carefully. Different ways of making it low. Either I'm able to climb. If I cannot climb, then I become a threshing instrument. I go through. If I cannot go through, guess what? I go sideways. If there is no way sideways, then I do the unthinkable. I carry it. Hallelujah. But hey, no mountain strong and big enough to stop our God. Every mountain works in his favor. Every mountain works for him. He created them. The Bible says, at the, at the voice of the Lord, the mountains keep like ram. Even mountains. Hallelujah. You got to know your God, people. He came in on a donkey. And they thought, well, he said and he's done the unthinkable. Hello, he may be unthinkable to man, but his declaration was loud. Heaven heard it, hath resounded it, and hell trembled. Hell trembled. They were like, wow, who is this king? And that's my king. I don't know about you, but that's my king. 
Come on, somebody. I don't know about it, but that's my king. That's my king. That's Jesus right there. You know, he's like that big older brother that shows up when someone is about to bully you. Hallelujah. They think they got you. Oh, they think, yeah, his brother is not there. And suddenly, that older muscle, muscle builded brother shows up. What do you want with my brother? Come on, somebody say, I'm well protected. Woo! My God will lure them out. My God will lure them out. My God will make them think they got you. <laughs> He's about to show for himself. May the Lord manifest himself in your life this month. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 21 verse 10 says, And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. Can you imagine somebody coming in and the whole city was stirred? Everybody knew. Somebody said they're going to know. They got to know. When Jesus shows up, they got to know. They will know. Hallelujah. When you show up and Jesus is with you, they will know. Bible said the whole city was stirred up. Who is this? What does he want? Where is he coming from? And they saw people putting down branches, not knowing what to do. They followed everybody to put down branches. They're going to, listen, whether they like it or not, they're going to worship your God. Woo! Jesus is Lord. And they said, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Can you imagine? Even the crowd did not know him. They called him a prophet. They forgot him one thing. Only a king rides on a donkey to come into a city. They said he was a prophet. Listen to me. People may not, they may misinterpret him, but you know him. Did you hear what I say? You know him. He's your king. He's your maker. He's your defender. He's the ruler of your life. You know him. So when you show up with him and you say, oh, he's a pastor that shall tell them, oh, open your eyes, see behind that pastor, there is God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hmm. He shows up big. When Jesus shows up big, listen to me, there is nothing that will not bow. Jesus takes his time to show up. But trust me, you know, like I said, somebody said sometimes ago, he said, the only reason why you are concerned about time is because of your thinking of what time is. But if you understand the concept of time and God, you will always realize that God is time. And if he is time, he is never late, never too early, always, always, always on time. Because it's time. They're giving you an ultimatum. Listen to me. Trust in the Lord. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in each time. God will show up at the right time. And ain't nothing anybody can do about it. Come on people. You got God. Tell your neighbor, I got God. That's all. That's all I need. I got God. Yes. And he shows up on time. Oh, may the Lord show up big for you this month. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you didn't hear me? May the Lord show up for you big this month in the name of Jesus. You know, there are some testimonies that when God shows up, you just say, Praise the Lord. And there are some who say, Praise the Lord. And there are some. Somebody say, There are some that you cannot just say, you cannot just declare, you got to act it. You got to jump it. You got to go crazy about it. I said, somebody pray. The Lord. Hallelujah. That's God showing up big for you. And that's what you're going to get this month. In the name of Jesus. Woo. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 says, Rejoice greatly. Tell somebody rejoice. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you have no business being sad. 
Oh, tell somebody, tell somebody, you have no business being sad. Come on. The joy of the Lord is your strength. 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 Hallelujah. You have no business being sad. The devil will try. The devil will use people. Hello. Refuse to be sad. The Bible says rejoice greatly. Tell you anybody rejoice greatly. You see great rejoicing requires a little bit of madness. Did somebody hear what I said? It requires a little bit of madness so that nobody will understand. You just start dancing, there's no music. And they are wondering. I'll tell you a story that I heard. It's a story. It may not be real, it may be real. I don't know. Two women went to consult a medium and said, we want, to be, we want to be mothers. The two of them said, I want to have a child. I want to have a child. And the medium looked at both of them and said, very simple. He said, whoever is ready to run mad amongst you will have a child. And one of them went back and said, I can never run mad. Why will I run mad? I'm not going to run mad. And the other one said, listen, I will run madder than mad if just to have a child. And the medium told them to go. And the one that said she was going to run madder than mad had a child. And they were supposed to come back to the medium maybe three or seven years later. And so they came back. And the medium said, oh, you, you have a child? He said, you, you don't have a child? He said, yes. He said, I refuse to run mad. The one that ran mad, the one that said she wanted to run mad, the medium said, okay. And there are times when you jump out of your bed, and ran to check on the child when you thought you had the child crying. The woman said yes. He said, are there times when suddenly you hear the child crying and you run to carry the child? You don't know why the child is crying. He said, all of that that you have done for the child is the definition of insanity and madness. Yay. Accepting to do what is right to rejoice greatly will bring your rejoicing. Yeah. So, dancing without music, hey, miracle will come. They will, they will call you crazy, but guess what? When they see the miracle, they will keep quiet. When you're working it out, oh, they will call you crazy. They will call you silly. They will call you mad. But when the miracle comes, they will zip it up. Because while you rejoiced greatly, Great rejoicing is required of you in this month. Some people are going to mourn this week. I ain't going to mourn. Some people are going to go through the stations of the cross. I'm not doing that. Jesus already did that. I ain't about to repeat what Jesus has done. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to dance. I'm going to party praising the Lord. Period. He's done it. I'm not doing it again. For no reason. I'm going to smile. I'm going to be happy. Oh, you see me? My countenance better be good. If it's not good, say, Pastor. You said you're going to smile. Come on, give me a smile. Hallelujah. Rejoice greatly. Let the world know that there are believers in this world. And the way they will know is to see us rejoicing. Because Jesus already paid the price. We're not paying that price no more. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud. Tell your neighbor, shout aloud. You 
are not allowed to not shout aloud. You are not allowed to not shout aloud. Mm -mm. Okay, demonstrate your shouting aloud. That's it. Number one, we will rejoice greatly. Amen. Number two, we will shout aloud. Amen. We will scare them with our shout. Amen. Let me tell you what shout does. The Bible said when the children of Israel were on their, on their way to, came to, to the promised land, they came to Jericho. And the Bible says Jericho was tightly shut up because of the children of Israel, because of the fear of them. But the Lord told them when you get to Jericho, don't do anything. Go around the walls of Jericho once a day. After you've done that, go sleep. On the second day, do the same thing. He said, on the seventh day, go around that wall seven times. And after you've gone around it seven times, God said, gather together. At the blast of the trumpet, let everybody raise a shout. And as they raise that shout, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. As you shout aloud this month, Every wall will come tumbling down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every wall, they will come tumbling down in the mighty name of Jesus. You got to shout. Shout aloud. Greatly rejoice. Shout aloud. Let's see what else it says. O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Hallelujah. Hey, my king is no longer coming. He's already here. Oh, did you hear what I said? My king is here. My king is with me. My king lives in my heart. My king is here. So when I rejoice greatly and I shout aloud, the king in my heart manifests greatly. Hallelujah. Ooh. Zechariah, Zechariah prophesied the coming of Jesus on a donkey. In the earth, Zechariah 9, 9, and it was fulfilled in John 12, 12 to 16. Listen carefully, every prophecy about your life. As Zechariah's prophecy about Jesus was fulfilled in John, I decree and I declare today, for the Lord God Almighty says, I have called you, I have anointed you, and I have sent you to the nations. And because he said, I will confirm the words of your mouth. So I declare today, every prophecy, every prophetic utterance, every word of God concerning your life, I decree their fulfillment. In the name of Jesus. Zechariah prophesied and God fulfilled it. And so shall it be for you in Jesus name. Let me tell you another reason why it must be fulfilled. Psalm 118 verse 26. He said, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I come to you in the name of the Lord. The name above every name. The name at which every knee bows and confesses that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of the Lord that is a strong tower that the righteous run into and they are safe. I come to you in the name of the Lord that David faced Goliath with and Goliath was slain. I declare to you right now in the name of the Lord every prophetic word of God concerning your life they shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Because it is in the name of the Lord. That name, hell had that name and hell trembled. Do you know? Let me tell you something. Every time you say Jesus, hell trembles. Every time. Whether you say consciously or unconsciously, hell trembles. Do you know why they tremble? They remember. Tell your neighbor they remember that there was a time in history that they thought they had Jesus. 
And at the right time, the Bible said, he made an open show of death, triumphing over death. He made a, Jesus did not defeat them in secret. They had, they had, they had Jesus in hell in secret. In secret. Only the devil and his court knew. The world did not know what was going on in hell. But when Jesus defeated them, everybody knew. The atmosphere knew. Do you know why? The Bible said when he ascended, he ascended upon high. He led captivity captive. He said people who were dead and were already in hell, Jesus led them out. The Bible said in those days, people saw glimpses of the dead. People who had died long ago, people saw them walk in the streets. Because Jesus led them out. Can you imagine taking away the captivity of the captive? Jesus did that for you. Listen carefully. Everything holding you captive. As Jesus liberated those in hell in those days, I declare and I decree your liberation. Today, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we break every captivity because we come in the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I come in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Well, that's the first part of the message. Now let's go to the second part. I told you I got two messages. Matthew chapter 10, verses 27 to 31, please. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. Matthew 10, 27. And what ye hear in the hair, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Verse 29. I had not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. I come to tell somebody today, you are valuable. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? You are way too valuable. Tell your neighbor, I am valuable. Let me, let, let me explain to somebody why I know I am valuable. I don't know why you are valuable. But I'm going to tell you why I am valuable. Before the father sent me to earth, he sent Jesus first. Not only did he send Jesus, he told Jesus, go and die for the sin of this boy. He told, he said, go and die and resurrect for the sin of this boy that I'm sending over 2,000 years after you've done it. And Jesus came, he lived, and he died for my sins. I don't know about you. Use your mouth to deliver yourself. And he died for my sins. Listen to me. If I'm not that valuable, why will God substitute my life with the life of his son? If I am not valuable, why will God substitute my life with the life of his only begotten son? It's because God values me. Ooh. Listen to me, God values you. And that's why he said, the hairs on your head, they are numbered. Can you imagine every time I take a razor to my head and I'm shaving to get myself bald, God says I'm counting. You just took off 800,000 strands of hair. And he said, don't worry. I'll get them back by the end of the week. And before the end of the week, they start sprouting. Then I say, Father, I don't want it. 
I go take it off again. And the father said, because you are that much valuable, I will replace them again. Every time I take it off, God replaces it. Did you hear what I said? Every time I shave, God replaces it. Because I'm valuable. Tell your neighbor you are valuable. Come on. If nobody tells you you are valuable, tell yourself, I am valuable. That's what the word of God says. Hmm. That word valuable, one of the synonyms is to appreciate. You know, and that means to recognize the full worth of. Let me tell you something. Somebody somewhere is waiting to recognize their value. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? Somebody somewhere is waiting to recognize your value. I had a friend. I still, he's still my very good friend. You know, he was getting along in age. And he refused to marry. <clears throat> And so we told this man, we said, listen, you got to marry. He said, I have not found what I want. So we began to question him, what do you want? Ask your neighbor, what do you want? And so we began to question this man. And this man says, <clears throat> he wants a mountain that he can climb. A few adults will understand. He says he wants somebody very, very endowed. Over endowed. I said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> so we began to look. All of us began to hunt. And when we see somebody we feel is endowed, we point him in the direction. We said, I about that. And he would say, well, the endowment is only backward only. It's got to be full package. Listen to me. When he found what he wanted, nothing could stop him from going for what he wanted. What he wanted, probably some people did not want. But that was exactly what he wanted. And he went for that thing with everything that he had. Somebody somewhere is appreciating your value. Are you listening to me? Somebody somewhere knows what they want in you. And when they see, nothing will stop them. Value. You are valuable. You are highly appreciated. You know? It's like business. Some a lot of people will come to you for business. Let me tell let me tell somebody in business this. Learn to turn people that back. Did you hear what I said? Learn to say no. Because the day you undervalue yourself, they will continue to undervalue you. So it is better to refuse than to accept and try to refuse later. Value yourself. My wife bakes. But listen to me. That woman will not undervalue herself. You know. People who appreciate you will come. One woman came and said. She said mommy. He said your cakes are good. He said I have a prayer for you. That those who want your cake. The Lord will give them the ability to afford it. She said, don't lower the standard. Don't lower the value. She said, those who want it, God will give them the ability to afford it. And that's the way life is. Some people will listen to you. Some people will not. Don't go after the people who are not listening to you. Stay with the people who are listening to you. People who appreciate you, God has sent them your way. Love them. Care for them. Take good care of them. You know, I saw this story also online. I may not be able to say it accurately. A man, when he was dying, no, no, I don't think he was dying actually. He gave his child a vehicle that was covered in dust in the garage. And he said, take. And the child was like, well, 
Okay. So the father said, take it first of all to the used car lot. The child took the car to the used car lot. They gave him what they thought was fair value. Okay. So the man said, now take it to the junkyard. The guy took it to the junkyard. They gave him a lower value. Then the father now said, now take this car to collectors. Take, wash the car, take it to collectors. And the guy took the vehicle after cleaning it and took it to collectors. People who collected antiques and good cars, old cars. And the value tripled more than any other person that had offered him anything. Let me tell you something. When God displays you, he will display you to collectors. Collectors are rare. You don't find them often. But when that time comes for you to be displayed, because of the value that God has put in your life, he will only display you in front of collectors. People who will appreciate your value. The Bible says, you will not stand before mean men. Ah, may you never stand before mean men. If you have stood before mean men before, you will know mean men. Mean men will undervalue you, undervalue the undervalue, and undervalue the undervalued the undervalue. Mean men will keep undervaluing. But when you stand before kings, before princes, your value is lifted high. You are valued the way God values you. Because what they can see is the value of God in your life. Rebe I, let me start to close. Rebecca. We know the story of Rebecca. But you can go and read it in Genesis 24. This was a young lady in her father's house. Her brother was Laban. And guess what? Every day at noon, she would go to the well, fetch water, and take it back to the house to take care of everybody in the house. So her job was to fetch water. Her job was to fetch water. And she did it diligently. She did it with character. She did it with pride. She did it with everything that was within her. Such that when if she goes to fetch water, if somebody asks her for water, she gives. And she kept doing that who knows for how many years. Then one day, Abraham woke up in his house, far away. And he called his servant. He said, go to my, go to my brother's house, to my brother's land. And go and find a wife for my son. He said, don't you bring a wife for my son from amongst these people that I dwell in. He said, but go back and bring a wife for my son. And the servant said, well, peradventure I go back and the woman will not follow me. The man said, you are, it's okay. He said, but go. The lady was still going daily to fetch water. There was no connection. And Abraham told the servant, go. And the servant, after much arguing with the master, left. And he went. And as he was going, the man began to pray. He said, Lord, as I go on this journey, prosper this journey. He said, let it be that when I get to that well, the damsel, did you hear what he said? The damsel that I see fetching water. And I say to her, give me a little drink of water. That, listen to me, not only will she give me water, she will offer by herself to water my camel. Without me asking, she will offer by herself to water the camel. And so the Bible said, when he got there to the well, he stood, and here comes Rebecca. Somebody say, here comes Rebecca. Oh, say it again, here comes Rebecca. Actually say it like this, I am Rebecca. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? I have Rebecca. If you are not Rebecca, they will not see your value. Bible said that Rebecca came. The man was watching. He didn't say what. Rebecca fetched her water. Covered the well. Put her water on her head. And was going. And the man stopped her and he said, Excuse me, young lady. Can I get a drink of water? And the Bible said, Rebecca put down her water. Gave him a drink of water. Said when the man was done drinking, he, she said to the man, Can I water your camel? Can I water your camel? 
And the man said, go right ahead. And he stood. He said, oh God. Oh, this is God. Uh, somebody say, this is God. Hey, say, this is God. He can only be God. And so she went. She watered the camel, watered the camel. When the camel were done drinking, she put her water back on her head. And she was going. And the servant said, excuse me. Say, first things first. He took a gold drink and he put it in her nose. He said, that's yours. He said, who are you? Listen to this, listen to this. He said, I am Rebecca, the sister of Laban. And immediately there was a connection to Abraham. And the man stood back. He said, wow, wow, my God. I've been in the way and the Lord led me. Ah! This month God is leading you. Your value will be appreciated. Your value will be displayed. Glory will come upon your life. In the name of Jesus. This month, April. Listen to me. Wake up every day and say, April, you are my month of appreciation. You are my month of value. As I go out today, I will be valued. In the name of Jesus. You will be valued. Oh, I got to stop prize upon your feet. You will be valued. This month, you will be valued. This month, you will be valued. People who have not appreciated you up till now, they will suddenly show up and say thank you. They will not show up empty handed. They will show up loaded. Somebody say loaded. Just to appreciate you. The value they thought they are taking away suddenly because they've gone elsewhere and they have received less value, they will suddenly realize that they need to come back to you with the full value. They will bring unto you the full value in this month in the name of Jesus. This month you will rejoice greatly. This month you will shout aloud. And this month you will be highly valued in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you, God. We adore you. Thank you, Lord. For this month we rejoice. Ah, marabo seke di handa ya Lipra koseke rababare ke bosonto li handa la kaya. Yaya boseke di baha. Rabababa leke bosonto leke de. We rejoice greatly, O God. I speak over the lives of your people. The things that happen to the life of a man that causes great rejoicing. I command it to take place this month in your life. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Even if you want to rejoice gently, you will not be able to. Because what God will do for you will not let you keep quiet. What God will do for you will not let you celebrate it lowly. But you will rejoice greatly. In the name of Jesus. They will wonder why you are shouting. <laughs> ah, they won't know why you are shouting. But they will see why you are shouting. Hey, did you hear me? They will wonder. They won't know. But they will see why you are shouting. In the name of Jesus. This month in the mighty name of Jesus. And value, 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 value. That's a word I cannot get out of my head. Value. Value, 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 value. Value. You will be highly valued this month. Valued. Let me say to somebody. If you are in business this month. Don't you undersell yourself. If they are going to choose to walk away. Let them go. There is a value that God has placed upon you. That you cannot undersell. Let me say this. Even to ladies this month. Don't you undervalue yourself. Who God is sending will value you. Don't you chase nobody. Let them chase you. Bible says a man that finded a wife. He finded a good thing. And then he obtains favor. If he's 
not searching for you, if he's not finding you, he will eventually undervalue you. But if he searches and he sweats and he works hard to get you, you will always be highly valued. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. We adore you. Glorify your own name, O oh God. We have done what we know to do. And so, Father, we step back. I step back completely. Let it be you in the lives of your people, O oh God. Let it be you that will be seen. Father, let nobody remember that this word was preached today. But let them see that you manifested. That's all, O oh God. Let the glory be yours and yours alone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.